Hey, it's Cam. Uh, welcome back to the truck. Let's talk some troubleshooting. Talk some troubleshooting. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna talk troubleshooting. We're gonna talk, talk diagnosis, at least how I do it. Uh, and like anything on this channel, this isn't a hard and fast guide on how to do it. This is what works for me. And this is my process of, of troubleshooting stuff. If you guys got advice or tips, throw it in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Cause you know, we're all kind of doing this to kind of help each other out, right? So I'm always open to learning better ways to do my job and I hope you guys are too. That's kind of why we're putting these out. Troubleshooting basics. I don't know, I guess, uh, try to think of like a situation. No start in the morning, batteries were dead. They were running it all day, like on the Friday and then Monday they came in and it's no start. They assumed that it wasn't charging or something. I think they said, oh, it's not charging, they told me. And this was an interesting one. I'll actually have some clips of this. We, we got some of this footage because on that same site, same customer, we had another machine that was also dead in the morning. First thing in the morning, they, they were suspecting a no start or a no charge on that. So we had two machines, same site, no charge, no start in the morning. So the rock truck, I, uh, yeah, the first thing I do, verify your complaint. Does it start? Check your night switch, verify your complaint. Second thing you do, I mean, the second thing I did, I just checked my batteries and see if they were actually dead or not too. I mean, you can do that first too. It, it doesn't really matter. You check your night switch, check your batteries, do your basic checks. I always circle back to like, do the most basic stuff first, the easy things, your easy checks, your, and call them idiot checks, whatever you want to call it. Check your oils, check your fuel, like your fluid levels, that kind of stuff. Check your batteries, check connections, that kind of stuff. And then get into, you know, is it actually charging? So that's what I did. I checked all my connections. I checked for the night switch being on all the way because on, on those Volvo rock trucks or on any, any machine actually, sometimes if the night switch isn't turned all the way, it might make contact, but you know, it, it might only be partially engaged and you can't get a lot of current through the night switch. And then the second or the, the next thing I did after checked all those things, the obvious things, machine doesn't start, uh, charged it up, boosted it and I checked the alternator, you know, you guys know how to check an alternator. But yeah, I just checked for, you know, is it charging at 28 volts or not? 26 to 28 volts, you know, depending on idle speed and what you got on there as a load, but just see if it's actually charging. This is kind of getting really specific, but the basics, what I wanted to really get into with, with Diag on anything, this has always kind of been drilled into me since I was an apprentice was like, it's hard to troubleshoot something if you don't know what it's supposed to do. You get your multimeter out and you're all ambitious and eager, you want to start poking things and prodding and seeing, you know, like, oh, I, well, I got 24 volts here. Okay, well, that's cool. Do you know if you're supposed to have 24 volts there or not? You know, are you supposed to have ground there or what? So biggest thing with troubleshooting, know what the system or, or component, whatever, know what it's supposed to do, figure out how it does it. Like usually there's an operations or something manual in there, or if you're, you know, if you're fairly mechanically inclined or whatever you want to call it, you can usually kind of figure out how something's supposed to work, right? Figure out how it's supposed to work and find the break in the system, figure out why it's not working. And it's usually, I always like, I always say this too, and there's some really great troubleshooting stuff on YouTube already, but it's, it's usually something simple. You know, that's like a huge thing. Like so many times guys get in over their head, they get into the diag on a machine and they're like, and, I, and I'm guilty of it too. You know, it happens a lot. You want it to be like, we're technical people. We want it to be a big problem. You like those head scratchers. You get in there. Oh man, it's gotta be the foo foo valve. It's gotta be something there, you know, like, yeah, it's gotta be something complicated doing something weird. No, it's not, you know, you got a corroded wire, a broken wire, a cut on a wire or a parts literally smashed off, a solenoid smashed off from something going through your drive line or there's stuck in a valve, there's something stuck in a, in a relief or something's heat scored and stuck. Like it's always, for the most part, I'd say like I, I go as far as to say like 95% of the time, I don't want to tell you guys like 99 because someone will say, you know, oh, what actually? Well, no, 95% of the time, I'd say it's something simple. You know, you got a simple issue that's causing a complex problem. And our job as mechanics is to figure out what, uh, like find that find that issue, right? So, so your job, go into it. And sometimes I do this too, I get really wrapped up in a, in a job. If it's a really tough one, I'm troubleshooting, I get really involved in it. I can't find a fault or I can't find anything. And I start thinking, oh, it's gotta be something more complicated, more, 
oh, maybe it's the actual monitor or the ECM. Oh, man, it's very rarely the ECM, by the way. When you look in OEM literature, it always it gives you all these troubleshooting steps, and they always tell you the very last thing is, oh, replace ECM. I can count maybe on like one hand the amount of times I've actually had a failed ECM or, or, con or a controller that didn't show any physical signs of failure, like other than being smashed or like corroded, but very rarely do I actually find like a failed ECM that uh, you know, just, just failed, just died for no reason, you know? I think I can count doing this for, been in heavy equipment for like seven, eight years now, and I can probably count on one hand how many times I've actually had an ECM just die for no reason. Don't go throwing parts at a machine until you verify it. Like ECM is like your last resort, because I almost guarantee you're gonna go and do that and your fault's probably gonna still be there. Been there, done that. <laughs> Sucks, I hate, you hate throwing parts and wasting customers' money. You're throwing parts on a machine and not having a fix, right? We wanna have solutions, right? Not, not make problems, so. A lot of times it's something simple, you know, circling back, something simple is causing this fault most likely. So break, uh, you know, you're troubleshooting. So we got, we've established that you know how the system's supposed to work, right? You've looked it up or you figured it out. Like, oh, you're, you're supposed to see, let's say, uh, you got constant power to the solenoid and it's a switched ground, right? You know you're supposed to see that. So now you've figured out, okay, that's what this system needs to see. Because some guys will go in there, poke around with their multimeter and be like, well, the solenoids, because, uh, you know, I got power to it. It's like, okay, you got power, but is, it, is, there, a, is there a ground there that's not getting switched on? A ride control solenoid on a Komatsu WA500 do that to me. I checked it, oh, there's, there's power there. Okay, well, why isn't it working? It must be a solenoid, you know, and this is me as an apprentice troubleshooting, and I threw a solenoid on it, same problem. You know, because I went straight to the end of it. I was like, okay, ride control's not working. I'll check that solenoid, see if it's actually powering up. See if it's, in, it's turning on. Okay, I got power here, it wasn't turning on. And what I didn't know, uh, maybe I'm getting this backwards, I don't remember, but what I didn't know, I, I'm pretty sure that was a switched ground I, and I wasn't getting a ground on that solenoid. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe it was something else, but I'm maybe getting my wires crossed. Anyways, I had one that bit me in the ass, tried it, didn't solve the problem, so now I put a solenoid on the machine, not an expensive, terribly expensive part, but still, it's parts that are unnecessary. Still didn't work. I got power here. Why don't? Why isn't it working? And then I went. I, I, I touched a ground to it. You know, I jumped a ground on there. Solenoid works. Ride control works. So our switched ground wasn't switching. Our ground wasn't going on. You got a machine. Machines are fairly big. You got a wiring harness that, if you laid it out, it's like let's say it's like 10, 15, whatever, 20 feet long, and some, sometimes more on bigger machines, right? You're thinking like, oh, that's a lot of wires, a lot of connectors, and a lot of junctions and all that. Yeah, it is, but it, you can break it down. We can make it simple. So troubleshooting that, you, we now know what the system's supposed to do. We circle back to this. You know what the system's supposed to do. We figured out why, what it's not doing. Okay, we're not getting a ground. Now we gotta find that. Why isn't it getting a ground? Where is that ground? Like, where are we missing the break? So what I usually do in that situation on a machine, I break the harness into chunks. You know, I go back to, I go and I find the best part, like the, the last good known area of that harness, right? So maybe it's the connection off the back or the bottom of the cab. And I check it there and like, okay, well we have ground here. So there's something between here and the solenoid that's, you know, up or, or, or you know, the bed somewhere and whatever. I'm trying to find a word to use, it's not. Something between here and that solenoid is broken, not good, whatever you want to call it. I don't know the technical jargon. So we're breaking it into chunks. Let's go cab to like your mid body connector, like where the, the center hitch is, right? There's usually a connector or something in that area or the harness goes through there. That's another good place to check. You know, if you have a connector and don't go poking holes in wires to find that, go to the next connector. So then you go from cab to the next connector and you don't have ground, let's say there, now you know from that to here, you're not, you got no continuity on that, on that one wire, let's say, or you got uh, no ground, that's where your problem is. So now you've just eliminated all the stuff in the cab, all the stuff forward of that connector. So you got this one chunk to work with, right? Or maybe it's the very front chunk, whatever chunk it is, you've uh, eliminated like 75% of the machine's harness, just doing a simple, like step-by-step -step check, right? That's how I troubleshoot things. And you can do the exact same thing with hydraulic troubleshooting too, right? Break it into chunks, you know? Like a, a example I had, I had a tra um, travel on a machine where right side was slower than left side. Oh, I can't remember what, I can't remember the exact complaint. It's been a while, but I uh, ended up finding a bunch of shit in the actual travel pedal valve itself. But I, uh, I think I, 
we were having some issues. But we had another guy that had gone out to it, and then I went to it and checked it out. And they were thinking it was the final drive. So I checked our pressure. All our pressures on P1 and P2 were good. I checked the final drive. I capped the final drive lines off. So I eliminated the final drive. And we were still getting low pressure to the final drive, right? If that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. But we were getting, I was getting good P1, P2 pressure when I test other functions. So I know it's not the pump or anything on that left and right side of the pumps. I'm just gonna actually, I gotta swing around here. I gotta go the other way. I'll, I'll pick up as soon as I get back on the road. I just took a wrong turn. I took a wrong turn. So, too busy talking to you guys. Too busy giving you all my secrets. Yeah, so where were we at? P1, P2, we were talking about. So, we get on this machine, we got a complaint of weak travel on one side, on the left side or right side, I don't remember which side it was, doesn't matter. Yeah, they were thinking it was the final, you know, like the actual, like the travel motor itself, there was something wrong with it. And so I capped the lines to the travel motor, just eliminate it, see, right? because you're just deadheading the lines now. If it was the travel motor that you were getting, like if it was weak or bypassing inside, you cap your lines in your, to your travel motor. I mean, you've just eliminated the problem part, technically. Like if that was the problem part, you've eliminated it. You should get full pressure now when you deadhead those lines. We, we weren't getting full pressure to the travel lines. You figure, okay, so there's something between here and there now. You know, is it the rotary manifold seals maybe? the bed like so we go back you know one more just on the top of the rotor mount we'll pop the lines off and check that let's say i think i went straight for, i think so in this situation just because i'm just doing this for to, to kind of give you an example but i think after i saw that it was still low pressure at the travel lines i just capped the lines and, and tried it i went straight to the travel pedal and just checked it and see if there's dirt underneath it so, you know the simple stuff like that yeah i went to um the travel pedals themselves and I pulled them out and I found like I think I found like a I don't remember like a broken spring or something one of the return springs or something like that inside or something was getting stuck and it wasn't allowing it to like fully cycle our pilot pressure for that yeah that, that was what I found on that machine but still but you can eliminate uh, components and see if the problem's still there you know we talked about swap Gnostics that's another really good tool for Diag like you know you got two of the same component they do the same thing let's say like uh, i think we talked about solenoids before on a on a transmission swap two and three around does the problem switch or does the problem stay in the same spot right if the problem switch then you know that solenoid is just bad right you know that's a really easy way to just eliminate a bunch of stuff and look like a hero too if you get it first crack <laughs> everybody likes to look like a hero once in a while you know you get there like Hmm. I'm gonna let me swap these around. You fixed, you know, you, oh yeah, change, problem change. Yeah, it needs a solenoid. Order up a solenoid, throw it on, machine's fixed. Spend 20 minutes diag on there and that's it, right? So troubleshooting is a big part of our job. It's good to know how to do it. It's good to get really good at it. I'm not the best at it. I make mistakes and I misdiagnose stuff, I'm sure too. And you know, things happen. We have to know a lot, you know, as mechanics, you gotta know, an in, you gotta know engines inside and out hydraulics, electrical. You're supposed to know how to weld, fabricate, all that stuff. We gotta do everything, right? So you can't be good at everything, but we try to be your best. You try your best at all of it. Big part of Diag for me, I think, I just, I try to be thorough on Diag. I really like doing it. It's one of my favorite parts of the job, I think, is figuring out problems, especially when it's something that other guys have been in a few times and haven't figured out, and then they call me in after the fact, and I. I can find it. That's always that's like a really nice feeling. It makes your customer happy. It makes me happy. I like finding problems like that. So, yeah, I don't know. You got any questions on it? Like, yeah, if you guys got any questions, I mean, do you have a problem that's like stumping you? Leave it in the comments. I'm not guaranteeing you an answer at all. I might not even respond. But leave it in the comments. Maybe someone else has an answer. Where do you go to get <clears throat> some answers? Oh, yeah. So like I've never come across something I can't fix. That's the thing. I'm kidding. No, <laughs> no, there's the, I mean, I, I try not to ever throw my hands out. Oh, I don't know. I, you know, I've never, I can't think of any issues that I've come across where I gave up. Oh, I can't figure it out because I, my, my mindset is always like, there is something wrong. It worked before you can make it work again. Right. That's kind of my mindset. If I'm really stumped, like places I go, man, there's some really great, I mean, it's all, I don't know if there's, gonna last now with this metaverse thing but like there's some really great facebook groups that have a lot of good uh good troubleshooting like really good guys on there that really know their stuff you know um 
and a lot of us kind of just you know it's like shop talk you just discuss things and post up a question you might get hassled a little bit but you know especially if you're an owner operator just trying to get free advice <laughs> well we try to help everybody i mean that's our job you know we like to get paid to do it obviously you know, no one does this for free right but uh most most decent mechanics know there's money out there to be made regardless if you're giving away a little bit of information here or there we're just not going to give you all our secrets if you really get stumped though like like i said if you get on a on a problem that you're just like you're pulling your hair out you've been on this for like a day like a day or two or i mean some guys weeks maybe <laughs> that has the same reoccurring problem like just take a step back man like if it helps, get another guy to have a look at it and see, because sometimes another set of eyes just sees something different. You know, we're all different people. We see things differently. I perceive something different than what another guy does, right? So not everyone troubleshoots the same way. What I just talked about, some other guy might be like, well, you're fucking out to lunch. Why would you even do that? I do it this way. You know, I start from the solenoid and work, or whatever. Like, everyone does it different. As long as you get the same solution, whatever. Just, you know, don't waste too much time, hopefully. But yeah, if you if you really get stumped on a on a real hard problem, you know, you know, phone a friend, right? Give me a shout. <laughs> get another perspective on it, or sometimes take a break. That's another thing I find. Um, I had a transmission that was really kicking my ass once. It was like having a lot of intermittent shifting, just weird issues, and like like again, oh, it's got to be you know something weird. Like it'd be running up, and then it would just start like to to slip and and do weird things and 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 kick down a gear and just shift funny like it would do a lot of weird stuff and it was like kicking our ass i went out to it for three three different times trying to figure it out in like the snow like slushy cold gross didn't want to be there but i stayed on site just like all day trying to figure this out pulled out like the torque converter whatchamabobbit valve <laughs> i can't, can't I think right now checking all my pressures checking everything getting right into it like it ended up being a broken ground strap on the ECM of that uh, of the, tr the TCU, the transmission control unit ECM or the ground strap was broken, like was corroded and fallen apart. And one of our other guys actually found it. I mean, I didn't even find it. I ain't too proud to admit I don't always get it 100% of the time. Even though I just said I did. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't get it 100% of the time. This guy came in after me. Uh, actually, we ended up bringing it back to the shop because there was other issues with the machine and uh we figured the best thing to do at this point is bring it back to the shop maybe we'll find something when we're doing the other stuff that needed to get done and he ended up finding a ground strap was missing and then after everything got put back together that was the only thing really different on the transmission side the ground strap and it it was shifting fine and maybe it was something else weird and obscure that we didn't see but nothing else really changed and that ground strap got added so i mean you can do the math that's pretty basic that part missing self that part there not anymore i mean so we we're getting probably some kind of you know solenoid wasn't uh ground or something wasn't grounding and and throwing some erratic signal or something or something weird was happening there but but still simple a simple issue right a simple thing causing a complex issue and that happens a lot simple things man it's simple it's simple like I said, I think we talked about this before. When I'm in the truck, I just like ramble because I can talk a lot because I'm always by myself. So now that I got someone to talk to, I talk a lot. <laughs> but it's good. Maybe you guys will like this, maybe not. Circling back, going all the way back, all the way back in time. Diag, simple, simple stuff, simple problems. You usually end up making a complex issue. Keep that in mind. Oh, and like I was gonna say, so if you, if you do have a problem that's kicking your ass, it's stumping you, stop and take a break even like a five minute go have a snack you know eat one of your granola bars in your in your truck and just kind of warm up and dry your hands out and just take a think right take a think and be like okay well or just turn your brain off all together go on your phone watch some youtube watch one of our videos circle back after the fact and be like okay now that i got a fresh mind i can think about this better you know I, that's what i find a lot if i'm really stumped on something and i'm like oh man i've hitting the same thing over and over, you're hitting your head against the wall. Why do the same thing over and over again, right? I think that's literally like the definition of insanity is like doing the same thing over and expecting different results. So stop, take a break, eat something, grab a sip of coffee, have a dart, whatever you gotta do. Then come back after you kind of given yourself a minute to breathe and think and suck on your cancer stick or whatever. 
apparently all mechanics want some, what was it, John Flayers and Winter Green. <laughs> uh, I laughed at that comment, I liked it. <laughs> I don't do that stuff. Body's a temple. So. <laughs> but yeah, no, I just come back after the fact. You might have, you might have a new perspective yourself on it and kind of, you might see something you weren't seeing before because you were, you were so focused on the same thing, you know. I've done that, happens. The biggest thing is we're all people, we're all just trying our best to fix this stuff. Don't ever be too proud to admit that you don't know. Ask for help, that kind of stuff. I, d I just like the superhero mechanics that they think they're all that, never had an issue. They'll tell you exactly how to troubleshoot everything all the time. And I mean, like, maybe they are, but yeah, I feel like those guys, like, uh, what was it? Pride comes before the fall. <laughs> You're up here and then all of a sudden they'll do one job and they'll shit the bed and now it's like, well, I thought you were super. I thought you were friggin' Superman. I thought you were Tony Stark. So I don't know. I don't know what else you guys, what else do you guys want to hear? What else you want to know? What else there, what else is there, Brandon?